in court with me. Yes, sir. Uh, Council, would you like to enter your appearance, please? Yes, I want to thank you. Diane Menashe, on behalf of the defendant, P.G. Sittenfeld. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sittenfeld, have you received a copy of the charging document? Yes, sir. Ms. Menashe, do you have one as well? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. I would like to advise you to review the charging document with your attorney and then determine with her how you would like to proceed in this case. I also need to advise you that you have the right to remain silent and not to make any statements. If you have previously made a statement, you do not have to say anything else. And if you do start to make a statement, you may stop at any time. Anything that you do say about the facts or merits of this case may be used against you by the government in the prosecution of this matter. But any conversations that you have with your attorney, those conversations between you and your attorney are confidential. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm also required to inform you that if you are not a citizen of the United States of America, you may request that an attorney for the government or another federal law enforcement officer notify the consulate from your country of nationality that you have been arrested but that even without your request, a treaty or other international agreement may require that notification. As to your status pending trial, I can release you on your own recognizances. I can release you under certain conditions or detain you. If the government seeks your detention, you are then entitled to detention hearing where I would then determine if there are muted extra circumstances about you or if there are certain conditions that I could impose upon you that would satisfy me that you would not be a flight risk or a danger to the community. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, what's the government's position on bond in this case? Your Honor, the government is not seeking detention. As far as special conditions, the government would ask the defendant's attorney in the passport, which I believe he's already done, to not obtain another passport, to restrict travel to the Southern District of Ohio and the Northern District of Ohio, understanding that you maintain your residence in the Northern District, so we are able to uh, um, avoid all contact with witnesses, and if you have a firearm, not to possess one. All right, thank you. Sinashi, do you want to be heard on those conditions? Your Honor, briefly, I do have the passport with me. I will surrender it to the clerk's office after the hearing. I have inquired with my client. He does have no firearms whatsoever within his residence, so uh, certainly no issue with that. And um, I would ask for the northern and southern uh, districts as well as travel, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Sittenfeld, I will um, grant you a bond then under those conditions, and I need to go over them in detail with you to make sure that you understand the conditions that are being imposed today. Right, the first five conditions are standard, and they are that you must not violate any federal, state, or local law while on release. You must report immediately to pretrial services every contact you have with law enforcement personnel, including any arrest, questioning, or traffic stops, or even a speeding ticket. You must cooperate in the collection of a DNA sample if that collection is authorized by statute. You must immediately advise the court and your attorney in writing prior to making any change to your address or telephone number. And you must appear in court as required, and you must surrender to serve any sentence that may be imposed in this case. Do you understand those conditions? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So in addition, I'm going to order that you surrender your passport to the clerk of court today. You have it with you today, right? Okay. In order that you do not obtain a new passport or other international travel document, that your travel be restricted to the Southern District of Ohio and the Northern District of Ohio unless otherwise approved by pretrial services. And I will tell you the Southern District of Ohio um, for bond purposes includes Dearborn County, Indiana, and Catton Boone in Campbell County, Kentucky. That way, if you drive the 275 loop around the greater Cincinnati area, you will not be violating uh, this restriction. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And the counties that um, are included are listed in the back of the bond order. So if you do have any questions, that will be 
um, step forth on the bond order, and you will have that with you. All right, you are also to avoid all contact directly or indirectly with any person who is or may become a victim or potential witness in the investigation or prosecution of this matter. All right, I understand that you do not have any firearms in your possession, but I am going to include that condition that you not possess any firearms, destructive devices, or other dangerous weapons. All right, Ms. Cook, do you have any other conditions that you would like me to consider? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, Mr. Sittenfeld, well, do you have any questions about the conditions that I've imposed? No, Your Honor. All right, uh, you will be required to sign this bond order um, on page four. Page four is titled Advice of Penalties and Sanctions. I will go over it with you, but I will ask that you review it again prior to signing it. By signing it, you're acknowledging that you understand the conditions that have been imposed, as well as the penalties and sanctions should you violate any of these conditions. So should you violate any of the conditions that I have imposed upon you today, I could issue a warrant for your arrest, revoke your release in order that you be detained, you could also be prosecuted for contempt of court, which could result in imprisonment, a fine, or both. If, while on release, you commit a federal offense, you will receive an additional consecutive prison term of not more than 10 years if the offense is a felony and not more than a year if the offense is a misdemeanor. It is a crime punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine or both to obstruct a criminal investigation tamper with a witness, victim, or informant, retaliate or attempt to retaliate against a witness, victim, or informant, or to intimidate or attempt to intimidate a witness, victim, juror, informant, or officer of the court. The penalties for doing any of the above are significantly more serious if they involve a killing or attempted killing. If, after your release today, you knowingly fail to appear as these conditions require, or you fail to surrender to serve any sentence that may later be imposed in this case, you may be prosecuted for failing to appear or surrender and additional punishments may be imposed. If you are convicted of an offense punishable by death, life imprisonment, or imprisonment for a term of 15 years or more, you will be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned for not more than 10 years or both. If you are convicted of an offense punishable by imprisonment for a term of five years or more, but less than 15 years, you will be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned not more than five years or both. If you are convicted of any other felony, you will be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned not more than two years or both. Finally, if you are convicted of a misdemeanor, you'll be fined not more than $100,000 or imprisoned not more than one year or both. A term of imprisonment imposed for failing to appear or surrender will be consecutive to any sentence that you would receive. In addition, a failure to appear or surrender may result in the forfeiture of any bonds that is posted. All right, so I have read to you the advice of penalties and sanctions that is set forth on page four, as I indicated. Um, I would like you to review it again. Um, counsel, this will be sent down to the marshal um, area. Pre-COVID, you would have an opportunity to discuss it with your clients um, in court. But if you would like to um, discuss it with him, you can go downstairs and it will be down there for him to sign. All right, Mr. Sintel, do you have any questions about um, the penalties or sanctions that I just went over with you? All right, I'm going to... Sign it now, indicating that you can be released after processing today. Then, Mr. Singer, as required by the newly revised Rule 5F, the United States is hereby ordered to produce all exculpatory evidence to defendant pursuant to Brady v. Maryland and its progeny. Not doing so in a timely manner may result in sanctions, including the exclusion of evidence adverse jury instructions, dismissal of charges, and contempt proceedings. I will be um, finding a written order to that effect that will be docketed in this case as well. All right, Council, are you ready to proceed with the arraignment today? Did you want to do that today? 
Oh, we could do it. I didn't know we were going to. But we can if you would like, and we can come back. You know what? Let's just do it now. Okay. Can you confirm that you have had an opportunity to review the indictment with your client? Yes, Your Honor, we acknowledge the receipt. Uh, we've reading. You have reviewed it. Both of us have a copy. All right. Would you like to waive formal reading in court? All right. And what is the plea? Not guilty. All right. Thank you. The court accepts this that not guilty plea. This matter can now proceed to the docket of Judge Cole. Um, does the government have anything else um, on this matter today? There you are. There you are. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Appreciate it. Thank you. I guess we're not sure if you want to wait a second. Kevin can probably give you a copy of the bond order if you want to take it down there. Okay. It is on the first floor on this side. 